Hello, my name is Dave Warren. I'm the Deputy Director of the International Public Sector Accounting Standards Board. With me today is Ross Smith, the Program and Technical Director of the IPSASB. Welcome to the Mid-Period Work Program Consultation webcast. This webcast will provide an overview of the key projects prioritized by the IPSASB and the process followed in their prioritization. You may also find helpful the at-a-glance summary of the Mid-Period Work Program Consultation, which is available on the IPSASB website at www ipsasb.org. The way that we will move through this webcast today is uh, we will try to provide a little background on how the IPSASB developed this important consultation. Uh, as I said, I'll try to go through and explain how the IPSASB came up with the projects that were proposed in this consultation. I've asked Ross to join me today to uh, provide a little color as someone else who was able to observe how this consultation was put together. I'll start with the scope and provide background on how the projects were scoped that were to be included. Then I'll go through at a very high level the projects that were prioritized. I won't spend a lot of time going through the details of each of the projects. There's uh, lots of detail in the consultation itself, but I will try to provide um, some indication as to why the IPSASB prioritized each of these individual projects. And then we'll go through at a very high level the IPSASB work program to discuss how these prioritized projects fit into the current work program. And then finally, I'll wrap things up with next steps and where we go from here. This consultation overall is an extremely important consultation to the IPSASB. It really sets out the final two years of the IPSASB's current strategy and uh, does even lead into the next strategy period as to which projects the IPSASB will. Uh, prioritize and fill its work program with as we move into the next uh, stages of the IPSASB's uh, future. Um, in that regard, it's also extremely important for the IPSASB to hear from you. As the IPSASB has prioritized projects they believe is in the public interest and they should focus on as an international uh, public sector standard setter, it's also extremely important for the IPSASB to hear from you for you to indicate what is most important uh, to you for the IPSASB to focus on uh, when it's setting standards internationally. In developing this consultation, the IPSASB went back to its 2019 through 2023 strategy. And one point of emphasis is this strategy uh, will continue and remains to be in effect until 2023. So this consultation does not impact the strategy itself. However, this consultation does look to fill the work program for the remaining period covered by the strategy. What this strategy does is uh, shows the IPSASB had great foresight in indicating that at the midpoint in its current strategy, the IPSASB would consult publicly uh, to see what its constituents believed were important projects that should be prioritized to fill the work pr program going forward. The, in addition to the strategy uh, requiring that the IPSASB go out and look at which projects should be added to the work program, this also seems like a very opportune time to go out. And this is for a couple of reasons. One, um, uh, specifically, there's been some significant changes in the environment in which the IPSASB operates between 2019 and today. And some of those relate to external factors uh, in that we are now operating in an environment where uh, there's been a significant uh, impact on uh, the finances of government and culture as it relates to the pandemic. And then there are factors that are internal to IPSASB as well in that uh, as we progress through the current work program, uh, resources are becoming available for the IPSASB to divert to upcoming projects and projects that the IPSASB has uh, committed to and has, uh, in, is in the process of completing um, have really filled gaps in the current IPSAS uh, suite of literature. So as a result, this may change the mix of projects that the IPSASB looks to take on going forward. What the strategy also does, it really frames what this consultation should focus on. And what I mean by that is, when I go back to the 2019 strategy, the strategy commits the IPSASB to seeking public input on what projects should be added to the work program. And this is important because the work program really focuses on one aspect of the IPSASB's overall strategy. The IPSASB's overall strategy is broken into five themes, and the work program really focuses on the first three themes. These first three themes, themes A through C, 
address the development and maintenance of standards and other forms of guidance. Theme A is setting standards on public sector issues. Theme B is maintaining IFRS alignment. And theme C is developing guidance to meet broader reporting needs. Now, the reason why this is the work program and where the this is the focus of the consultation is because theme A through C projects are those that the IPSASB takes the lead on. Themes D and E focus on raising IPSIS awareness and promoting their adoption and implementation, as well as highlighting the use of accrual information and providing greater clarity over how the IPSASB plans to influence the works of others in strengthening PFM. Now, themes D and E sit outside the work program because these are areas where the IPSASB looks to uh, partner with or support other organizations that have shared interest uh, in themes D and E. So as a result, the real point of emphasis I want to get across is we're really focusing on the work program itself here. Ross, before I move on to projects that we're prioritizing, is there anything you want to add? Thanks, Dave. And not a whole lot more to add from me on this, but I do think it's important to uh, emphasize that really when the board was setting its strategy back from 2017 to 2019, it's always envisioned this mid-period work plan consultation as the current uh, suite of projects uh, begins being completed and more staff and board resources become available. And as you said, the board's carrying through with its initial plan uh, when it approved the strategy to undertake this consultation. And as we'll get to in a couple slides from now, you'll see visually uh, from the current work program and you know the outrun of the, the various projects that there really will be uh, some limited staff resources and board resources becoming available in 2022 and 2023. And now really is the time to firm up on the, the next uh, projects to add to the work program so that the, the resources can be efficiently used in the back half of the strategy process. Thank you. Thanks, Ross. So what I'll go into now is uh, how the IPSASB prioritized projects and what they considered in setting projects as a, a high uh, public interest in being completed. And the IPSASB really focused on a few factors. The first factor they considered was they went back to uh, output received from uh, constituents that attended regional roundtables that were held as part of the rollout of the current 2019 through 2023 strategy. The second factor that was considered were project prioritization criteria that were developed as part of the 2019 through 2023 uh, strategy. These criteria include prevalence, uh, consequences uh, related to addressing the issue, urgency in addressing the issue, and uh, feasibility in coming up with uh, an answer to the issue or, or a way forward associated with the issue. Coming out of these uh, two factors, the IPSASB uh, put forward or prioritize six projects. And these were grouped into two categories. The first category are your major projects. And major projects are uh, defined as projects that are expected to use a significant uh, amount of resources in uh, reaching a path forward or uh, reaching consensus. And the reason why these projects are expected to use a significant amount of resources is it's expected the IPSASB will have to um, devote significant resources to uh, gaining consensus around uh, core principles. And the two projects that are included in the major projects bucket are presentation of financial statements and differential reporting. Presentation of financial statements is an extremely important project because this is really the uh, link between the uh, public sector entities that are preparing financial information and their users that are digesting the information. And where the IPSASB can divert, divert resources so that um, this information is more useful and more digestible to their users is expected to be a, an excellent use of IPSASB resources. The second project relates to differential reporting. And this project uh, was prioritized because as more and more uh, jurisdictions move to accrual accounting and to uh, international public sector accounting standards, um, more ways for specifically smaller or less complex public sector entities to apply IPSIS is becoming more and more important. So the IPSASB uh, believes it's important to explore options on how to uh, create a, a reporting framework that still operates within the robust framework that currently exists within IPSIS, but that can be applied to 
less complex public sector entities. Minor projects represent projects that are expected to use fewer resources. And the reason these projects are expected to use fewer resources is because the FSASB isn't expected to have to develop significant consensus around the core principles. And the reason for that is the four projects you see in this minor project bucket uh, have a good base on which the IPSASB can build. So consensus has already been developed around the core principles. If you look at IPSAS 21 and IPSAS 23, the top two circles, uh, these projects really uh, gained more momentum and more priority because of the measurement project that is currently ongoing. And the measurement project identified some inconsistencies in how measurements applied across IPSAS, uh, specifically uh, in IPSAS 21 and 31, and this was seen as a good opportunity to address some of these challenges, along with other minor challenges that exist in applying IPSAS 21 and 31 in practice. IPSAS 33, uh, again, is also an important project. Again, it has strong core principles, but as this is the really the first time that uh, entities who are first applying or adopting IPSAS uh, see an IPSAS, um, or apply an IPSAS, this is the gateway standard into IPSAS. And as a result, where the IPSAS, IPSASB can devote resources to making adoption and application of IPSAS um, easier on first time adoption, this appears to be a good uh, allocation of IPSASB resources. And finally, in the bottom right, the blue circle, making materiality judgments, uh, constituents have raised concerns with the lack of clarity on how to apply materiality throughout IPSAS in general. So as a result, this seemed like a project where the IPSASB could uh, devote limited resources and uh, provide uh, significant gain to uh, their constituents. Ross, I'm about to move on to the uh, work program, unless you want to add something on uh, the prioritized projects. Yeah, thanks, Dave, uh, for the, the good introduction on the major projects and the minor projects and the board's thought process and how uh, it selected the various projects. What I'd like to make a quick comment on is, is the importance of the mix of projects on the work program and, and that it is important that there are a mix of new major projects as well as minor projects overall. Um, it is really important to keep a balanced work program. Um, which, which includes a mix of major projects that take longer time and take significant board and staff resources with those smaller projects that uh, deal with some housekeeping issues that you've identified such as IPSIS 21 and IPSIS 33 and other minor uh, changes to help make the, the IPSIS literature more useful um, to constituents using them. Um, I do wanna highlight that I think the boards landed on a, a really good mix of major and minor projects. Uh, and one point that's highlighted in the consultation that I, I think constituents should take note of is that um, even if the minor projects aren't going ahead and they're not supported by constituents, they're not really uh, substitutable for another major project. Um, in the 2022-2023 period, the board does not believe it can take on any more than two major projects. So it's just important to note that because in past consultations, we have noted that sometimes um, constituents put less priority on the smaller projects and, and try to substitute that a resource for another major project. But even if the board was not to make any movements on the minor projects proposed here, it's unlikely that there's enough resources available to add a third uh, major project in addition to the two that are pro proposed. So just a couple points I wanted to highlight on the importance of the mix of the work program. Thank you. Thanks, Ross. And that's a really good point going into our next slide. Uh, we talked about the mix, but what this work program diagram really shows, um, and just before I forget, this is the uh, June, 20, June 2021 work program, so it's the, the most up-to-date version that we have. Um, what it really shows is in 2022 and in 2023, the IPSASB expects to uh, complete some of its major projects. And as Ross indicated, uh, this presents an opportunity for the IPSASB to allocate those resources to uh, new major projects. And because of which projects are following off, we believe this gives us the ability to take on two major projects. The minor projects, um, the plan in general is that these can be worked on um, while the major projects are out for their various uh, consultation phases. So as Ross noted, uh, the mix that was developed um, 
it's difficult to substitute between one or the other based on the resource availability um, that the IPSAS be considered in looking at its uh, future work program. So what I'll do is I'll take us into what's next and uh, next steps. And I touched on this at the very beginning, uh, but I'll reiterate, this is a, an extremely important consultation for the IPSASB. And we're really, we're really focusing on what the IPSASB can fill uh, the remaining period in its strategy with on its work program. Uh, so as a result, it's, it's also very important for the IPSASB to hear from you to understand what you as its stakeholders uh, prioritize for an international standard setter. Comments are due on November 30th, 2021, and you could submit your comments uh, on the website using the submit a comment button on the consultations webpage. Uh, you can stay informed and you can see additional information um, that's updated per periodically on the uh, IPSASB website. Uh, on the ribbon up top, there's a consultation projects uh, button. And if you click on that, uh, you'll see the link to the work program consultation. And as I said, there's additional resources there. I, I touched on one, which was the at a glance, which is a, a good summary of the overall consultation. With that, I'd like to thank everyone who invested their time today to learn more about the mid-period work program consultation. I hope you found this webcast informative and helpful in a, as a first step in submitting your response. Thank you very much for attending and have a great day.